I'm like a kid in a candy store. You get the catalog twice a year and just go through it and the world opens up. I thought this is perfect. I don't have to take any tests. I don't have to write any papers. And I'll be with people my own age that are doing the same thing I love to do. They make your mind think and uh, that's crucial to me. So forgive yourself that you can't draw, but can you see? The dilemma happens as we start drawing something we see, we don't see what is there. Did you know that taking the initiative to learn about things you love is actually key to successful aging? Join us today as we discover a wide variety of courses available to our community through OLLI, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at UVA. Come on. OLLI is an organization, local nonprofit. We do short courses for seniors. And what that means is uh, university level courses for folks who are available during the day most often 50 and above in, in age, and uh, they last for three to six weeks. Tell us a little bit about the history of OLLI, when it started, why it okay. started. Our OLLI, which stands for Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at the University of Virginia, started out as Jill, the Jefferson Institute mm -hmm. for Lifelong right. Learning, and uh, it was three locals who wanted to um, bring this opportunity to Charlottesville and so they went to the University of Virginia and pitched the idea and over time we became a university foundation and then we received a grant from the Osher, Bernard Osher Foundation whose mission it is to create these lifelong learning institutes. We understand that the pursuit of knowledge, lifelong learning, learning new things is uh, really healthy, good for your brain. Right, and not just cognitively but also socially right and how you you're, you're engaged with your community right and I was just recently reading about the um, creation of wisdom in oneself and that the pursuit of lifelong learning aids in creating wisdom it gives you different ways to think about things different experiences different perspectives on something that you thought you already understood right. and so uh, that's really what we're at about at the core is providing opportunities for growth and for learning to the seniors in our community just write your name and I want to ask you how long did it take you to learn to do that you took a long time to learn to do that don't give up on yourself if you can't draw after the first day. First of all, as you age, you're supposed to keep your brain active, so I always put that as my number one priority. But secondly, it's just sheer enjoyment. I could be a professional student. I love going to classes, I love learning new things, and it's always fun. I, I never learned to recite anything in the Irish poetry class. I was more an analytical type, but I, I enjoyed that one in particular. It was really good. It's for the telomeres in your brain to challenge yourself with something new. And I have never been artistic, I've never drawn, I've never painted, but it's something I've admired so much in other people. So maybe today's the day that Pam lights that fire in me. I'm saying be brave, do it with a pen. You'll have to think about what you're doing and forgive yourself if it's not where you want it to be. I have friends who take these courses who are not really seniors. So, right. so they're, they're courses that so many people would be interested in. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of your schedule. You know, right. So a lot of people are still working full time so they may not be able to attend That's daytime right. classes. Because, exactly, because our classes are generally held between nine and four. Mm -hmm. We have a few that we've had from six to eight and uh, they've been really successful also. But you do need to be available during the daytime or at least be able to take a lunch break, schedule your lunch break, because our classes are an hour and a half long. Okay. But it is a three week to six week commitment, so you need to, to be able to come to them all. Among the classes I've taught with Ali are on uh, German literature, Goethe and Schiller, on uh, Germany in the 20th century and the changes it's gone through in the students. I would say, why don't we go to Germany? Or uh, when you're next in Germany, could you let me know? So uh, we worked up a plan and collaborated with the Senior Center. And that's how uh, this got started. I've taken history classes, education classes, travel classes. There have been religious courses that I've taken. I, I don't know if there are any subjects that are not covered. I, there aren't. 
I can tell you, every subject known to man is covered. <laughs> but uh, around here, what is really popular is history. Okay. That's a shock to you, isn't it? No. And <laughs> music. Yay. Art and current events, politics. And um, we have short course, not short courses, we have special presentations that is like a short course. It's just a one time, one hour and a half. And that's where we're really able to get into current events, what's really happening locally or globally. To pull in a speaker to talk for the, that one time thing. And I've looked through the catalog. You have health sciences, medicine, nature, Mm -hmm. sports related topics. Right. I mean everything e really. Everything. How many courses are offered throughout the year? How, how does that break down? Well our courses were organized by semester. Okay. And within each semester we have an A session and a B session. And so within that semester we generally have between 82 and 88 courses. Very exciting. And this is called a turnaround. The turnaround brings you right back to the beginning. You start another verse. I teach a history of the blues, African banjos and rhythms, meeting Western scales. And so we, we take it from there to, uh, to the blues having a baby, and they call the baby rock and roll. I heard Ralph just practicing on his guitar, and it just sounded so earthy and Southern, and it's fun. It's uh, kind of like a uh, low impact set of college courses for retirees. You can get out of the courses just as much as you want to put in. And you can bend notes on harmonica. So how do people sign up if they want to take courses? Well, our courses are for members, and there's a membership fee per semester. And then you can take as many courses as you like. The, there's the membership fee, there's a first course fee, and then each course after the first is so very, very affordable. Obviously these fees probably help you to provide these courses to the community, but do they cover everything? No, they don't cover everything. That's a very great question. We are a 501c3 and a foundation of the University of Virginia, and our dues and fees cover w about one third of our operating budget. Our other third is from the Osher gift that uh, we received and we're the benefits of a disbursement from the endowment each, right, each through year UVA. through UVA. And then the other third really is through our own fundraising efforts. We have an annual campaign, we also have a scholarship fund, and so if someone tells us that membership dues and course fees are a barrier to them being able to take mm -hmm. courses, then we offer them a scholarship. So talk about the instructors and who oh teaches gosh. and where, where are they coming from and are they paid? Anyone who is passionate about a subject and wants to share it, that is the broad stroke of who our instructors are. They um, work for free. We don't pay them. These are all volunteers. And many mm. of them are lifetime educators, uh, but not all of them. We have a doctor who teaches a course on uh, antique furniture and antique furniture making. We have a physicist who talks about orchids. So w they come from everywhere. And it's yeah. very easy to become an instructor for Ollie. Brand new people who've not taught before, we meet with them and give them some tips. And you can find information uh, on our website about how to become an Ollie instructor. But they're really our lifeblood. Yeah. because they bring experience, they bring knowledge, they bring passion. More rhythmic. And what we hear from our instructors is that the students, the OLLI members, do the same in the class. These aren't students in the, the sense of any chronology, but they are learners. So some are architects, some are businessmen, uh, some have uh, a diplomatic background. So what I get is a conversation with people from whom I learn a lot. Well, I think music keeps us young. And uh, a doctor once told me that music has curative powers. His name was Dr. John, but uh, <laughs> he's a doctor. I don't look at it as a chore. I look at it as, as a fun activity. So I um, always think you have fun when you're learning. In different areas, it's a little more serious than in other. Don't move your hand except creeping around the paper, taking that dot for a walk. Instructors also, some of their benefits are that they can take courses. Yes, so we do give them uh, a little perk 
They get to take classes for free. And we do that for some of our other volunteers, like class assistants. Which is an important role. Talk right, about that. Right. Our class assistants come from the group of people who've registered for that class. And most of them have volunteered. There's a mechanism to volunteer to be the class assistant. We provide training, materials. But the class assistant is like the OLLI representative there and the instructor's right-hand person. They greet, they do the logistics of attendance tracking and giving out the handouts, but they also get a perk and that is a, a free class on us. And then members have other benefits aside from being able to sign up for courses and getting mm -hmm. better rates each time, but what right. are their other benefits? Often we have a course that is just for members and there's no fee for it. So that'll be in a semester. We've also um, had some very successful happy hours. We have four happy hours a semester where only members of that semester are invited and we've been meeting at local pubs and uh, it's been that's been a lot of fun. So there's social opportunities and there are other educational opportunities. I've had so many people walk up to me and say, have you covered Ollie yet? Mm -hmm. Have you covered Ollie yet on the show? Um, because people who take these courses are so excited about it. They call it the best kept secret in right, Charlottesville. Right, I know, and thank you for helping us get <laughs> <laughs> But I don't think Let that one out of the bag. Yeah, I don't think that's the case for long, but. Well, I'll tell you, we had 1,004 people taking classes with us this spring in those 88 classes, 1,004 people. That was a record number for us. So the word is getting out. And our best advertising really is a member asking their friend to come. You've got to take these Ollie classes, just yeah. like your friend was doing. Yeah, I have a friend who just absolutely loved and wrote to me right away. Oh, good. And yeah. That's so great. this is great work. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing it with us. Yeah, well, thank you. So I'm going to give each table a totillion, and you can practice blending. You can also use your fingers. I go way back to experiential learning and the idea of lifelong learning is important because the excitement and fun of learning uh, didn't stop just when you graduate from college. Why wouldn't you like to sit and learn? What, what's better than enriching your life and learning more and more? I just get great personal satisfaction out of sharing something I love and uh, seeing smiles on people's faces. It sounds corny, but it's true. Thank you.